Hey, what's going on guys? Hey, we're about to jump back into another great series of my setups. You don't want to miss this, so stay tuned. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Outdoors with Creed. Uh, before we go any further, thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. Thank you for following along. If you're new to this channel, won't you jump down there, hit that subscribe button, make sure you click the bell so you get notified anytime I upload a video. Uh, as always, please like the video, smash that thumbs up, uh, leave comments and share the videos, let all your friends know. We got some wild adventures and some helpful tips along the way. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Uh, I'm getting back into the my setup videos where I talk to you guys about my rod and reel setups and why I have them set up that way. So we're going to jump into it and I'm going to bring to you two new rods that I just recently got and why I have them set up that way. And before I go any further, just a little bit, I want to talk to you guys real quick about these cool new rod covers that I just got by UPRVR. Uh, these rod covers are neoprene. They have the bungee cord right here that you just hook onto your reel. So it makes sure that your covers don't accidentally slip off in your boat. Uh, because of the neoprene material, you never have to worry about the tip of your rod poking out and damaging your rod tips as you're putting them into the box and pulling them out. Also, with this setup, you can get the rod caddy so then you can carry multiple rods at one time. So if you haven't already, check them out, UPR, VR. I'll leave their link down below so you guys can look into those. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into this. These are the, just one second. These rod covers are real easy to get on and off. Like I said, just pull the little string, the bungee cord, and it pulls off your reel handles and you can go to work. It's real easy. Um, I have those lure covers. I got those from Wu Tungsten. As always, I'll leave them linked down below. Uh, so that way you can get you some uh, lure covers to help protect your, your baits for treble hooks so they don't get hung up on a lot of things. But, Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. I need to turn my phone off. Uh, turn it on vibrate. Let me go ahead and do that now, guys. I apologize. Okay. What I have here, I have two of the six gill. I don't know if you'll be able to read it. Let me see. I'll try to get it in there where y'all can see it without messing them up. Ugh. Nope. Well, hang on. I'm going to have to shift you guys over just a little bit. All right. I have the six gill cranking rod. Uh, it's in the name cranking. These rods were specifically designed for fishing crankbaits. And I have two of these actually. The one I have in my hand is the uh, 7.4 medium power. As you can see, I have this one set up uh, for my more deep diving crankbaits. Uh, these rods, like I said, the pros uh, with six gill, they got together and designed a line of rods for crankbait fishing. I went with the medium power. That way on your, on your back swing, those lures can load up the rod really, really good and sling that bait out there, get you a nice long cast, especially with these uh, longer rods or fishing the deep diving crankbait. This one here is the Strike King uh, Sexy Shad color, but I think this is their uh, XD6, I believe. Uh, five, I'm sorry. This is the 5XD. Uh, this It dives down to about six to eight feet, I believe. It might go deeper than that. But I got the medium power. I'm gonna step back so you guys can see this. When this rod loads up and you get a fish on there, look at the bend on that. So that's why I went with the medium power. When those fish bite, it loads up really good, especially with treble, uh, treble hook baits. You don't want to go with a too stiff of a rod because at that point, 
for one, the rod doesn't load up as well to get a good long cast. But then when those fish make a surge and try to dive down deep, you want a good rod with a lot of bend in the tip to absorb that uh, that surge from those fish. Otherwise, if you have too stiff of a rod, you're gonna rip those hooks out. So I went with the 7.4, again, for my deep diving crankbait. So when I'm out fishing out deep, I can make long casts. And I have this rod paired up. Uh -oh. I have this rod paired up with a, uh, this is actually the new six gill, I don't know if you can see that, Hamar reel. Uh, this is a six five to one gear ratio. Uh, I went with the six to one because making those deep, those long casts when you're fishing out deep, I feel like the six to one will help me get the bait down to that depth that it needs to be at. But then it also helps me work this bait nice and slow to where I'm not overfishing it. And I think that's gonna help me so that way I don't overfish the bait and burning it through there. It, it's gonna help me slow down and keep the bait in that strike zone a lot longer. Uh, I haven't fished with the Hamar a lot at all really, but it doesn't have the dual braking system, but it does have the new magnetic braking system that Six Gill has come out with. So this, this might be a little bit easier than the uh, dual braking system, not having to worry about the centrifugal and the magnetic. Don't get me wrong, I love my Creus and my Ray with that double brake system. I actually got the Hamar because I was trying to find the Creus 6 to 1 gear ratios and they didn't have them. And they had the Hamar and they're right around the same price. So I just went with these. But I am looking forward to getting out fishing with this to uh, get me some crankbait fish. And then this one is my other crankbait setup. Same rod, same rod. This is the six gill cranking rod. Uh, also medium power. It has that same bending action. The only difference is this one, I went with a seven foot. This one I have set up more for my shallower crankbaits. This one I believe is a crankbait that I got yeah, this one came in one of my monster bass. As always, I will leave that link down below for you. But this lure came in my monster bass. As you can see, it's a small square bill crankbait. So this one is more set up for my shallow crankbait fishing, anywhere from the square bills or to the shallow running crankbaits that run anywhere from, you know, maximum depth of depth, not depth, depth of about six feet, maybe. Uh, you can. You can play with that, that depth according to your line size. Both of these reels I have spooled up, I believe with 12 pound, it's either 10 or 12, I don't remember. It's either 10 or 12 pound uh, Berkley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon, since fluorocarbon does sink, but depending on the line size, which I had to ask people for help on this, because I'm not too proud to ask for some help. The lighter your line, the deeper you'll get your crankbait. The heavier your line, it's gonna hold those that line up so you're not gonna get down to that max depth like you want, which sometimes that is what you want. So if you're trying to stay above uh, certain obstructions or anything that's in the water, you might wanna go up on your line size so you are getting that crankbait down deep where you want it, but it's not getting tangled up and the brush and tree limbs and stuff that might be on the bottom of the lake. Uh, also with this one, the seven foot is also, so if I'm making a short, precise cast to a certain piece of cover, then I can do that a lot easier with a roll cast or even maybe flipping it out there. I have a shorter rod, which will allow me to make those flips and those precise casts to a shorter distance if I'm fishing at cover. But it's like I said, it has the same action, same bend, basically the same rod. This one, however, does have my six gill Creus reel that has the magnetic brake as well as the centrifugal brake on the inside. And this one 
I have in the five three to one gear ratio. Again, fishing shallow, so I don't have to overwork that reel to get the bait down to the depth that it needs to be in, but then it's gonna help me slow down, keep that bait in the strike zone a lot longer, which is what I want. Because as long as your bait is in the strike zone, your chances of getting bit and getting the boat or getting the fish into the boat will greatly increase. So those are my two new setups, six gill cranking, uh, six gill Creus, five three to one gear ratio, six gill cranking rod, seven four medium power, paired up with the Hamar, six three to one gear ratio, six five, my apologies, six five to one gear ratio. Uh, both spooled up with Berkeley Trilene, 10 pound test line. Uh, these are new rides. I have not had a chance to take them out fishing. When I do, I will try to get it on camera for you guys. Hopefully we can get some bass in the boat. But I'm, I'm really excited. Spring is here. Spring is here. It's in full effect. Fish should be moving up on beds, getting ready to spawn. So at this point, the fish are feeding up. They're getting ready to lay eggs. You can just about catch fish on any bait. As long as the bait is in the water and in the strike zone. So I'm really excited to get out here and get to fishing, try to get some fish in the boat. Uh, again, I apologize, I had a tournament and things didn't really go through the way I wanted it to, but I just found out that the Lake Darnell tournament that we were supposed to have had back in February, but we were part of that crazy snowstorm that came through and that tournament got canceled. So it has been rescheduled for a date in June so hopefully I'll be able to get in on that tournament as well as I got information about another tournament circuit that I will be getting into and I'm really excited to get into that one because this tournament is, uh, is for our first responders here in the state. If you are full-time law enforcement, you work for parole officers, I believe corrections officers, uh, firefighters, EMS, active duty military as well as retired military and retired law enforcement you are able to fish this tournament uh it is a team tournament one person on the team has to be full-time or retired from one of those fields just provide your identification to show that you are either active duty or retired and you're in the game it's a way for a lot of the law enforcement to get together have fun de-stress from the work that we do and just come together and have some fun in the name of fishing so i'm looking forward to getting those things out on the water and hopefully putting some fish in the boat which will hopefully put some money in my pocket so that's all i got for you guys drop some comments let me know what you think about my my cranking setups uh i will like i said i will leave the links below for Everything that I have, my Monster Bass, my Six Gill, my Wu Tungsten, the UPR VR rod sleeves, um, as well as I will leave links for my Bucked Up products because it's very hard to stay out there on the water and fish if you're not in good health. So I will leave all that stuff linked below. But uh, drop me some comments, let me know what you guys think, share the videos, and see you guys again in the great outdoors. Take care.